Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in today to today's message, um, to today's devotional. So uh, what I wanted to talk about today was uh, the gospel. Um, one thing that's been on my mind or a passage that's been on my mind recently is uh, in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, where Paul uh, tells the Corinthian believers there to examine themselves and to test themselves as to whether or not they're truly in the faith. So it's kind of in light of that that I, I picked today's t uh, topic. So, um, well, in, in discussing the gospel, there's certainly a lot of things that we could talk about. Uh, we could talk about Christ going to the cross, where he paid for the sins of the world. We could talk about how Jesus lived a, a perfectly obedient life under the law of God. Or we could talk about uh, repentance and faith. We could talk about um, the hard demands of, uh, of, the, of the call to follow Christ. You know, the, the demand, he says, or the call, he says, to uh, take up your cross and follow him. And being willing to suffer any any level of persecution, uh, but the part that I uh, want to focus in on today is uh, one particular component. And those are the several different components, but one particular component, which is what is it that actually God the Father requires of us in order to enter into His heaven? There's something that we need in order to enter into heaven, and, and what is that? So. Um, we all have, of course, are familiar with the life of Christ. We, you know, we've read the Gospels, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all tell us about the life of Christ, how he was born as a baby and, uh, you know, born in the town of Bethlehem, is raised up in the town of Nazareth, and then when he reached 30 years old, he, you know, he began his public ministry, um, and for the next three years, he had a public ministry. Uh, he had disciples, uh, 12 disciples that followed him around, great crowds of people that followed him everywhere. He performed innumerable miracles. Uh, he all of his teachings, you know, the teachings of the gospel of the kingdom, how to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And then, of course, he went to the cross at the end of that. He paid the price for our sins. And then after three days, uh, after he had died, he rose again from the, from the grave. And he was alive on earth, seen by several hundred people uh, during the next 40 days on earth. And then after that, he ascended back into the heaven to the right hand of God the Father, which is where he is right now, uh, interceding for the saints. But suppose that... Um, it, it happened a different way. So let me kind of give you this uh, little bit of an illustration um, of the story. I actually heard this from a, from a theologian, and it just kind of helps to make the point, which is suppose that Christ, instead of being born as a baby into the world the way he did, suppose he just kind of, uh, I guess, parachuted down to earth as a fully grown man, and he landed right in the middle of a bunch of Roman soldiers, and they seized him, and they grabbed him, and they nailed him to the cross. So there is no, you know, so he skipped over the whole three-year ministry that he did, but he just, as soon as he arrived on earth, he was nailed to the cross, and, and then all the sins of the world, just like the Bible says, uh, were, uh, were paid for by him on the cross, and then he rose again out of the grave three days later, and the rest of the story is as the Bible says, and he ascended back into heaven after that. Now, if, that, if it happened that way, would that be enough to get you into heaven? If Jesus simply arrived on earth, went straight to the cross, paid for our sins, and went back to heaven, and you put your faith in him, would that be enough uh, or all that God requires of you in order to go to heaven? And as this theologian explained, he said, well, no. What that would do is that uh, since Christ paid for your sins, that would keep you out of hell. But that's all that it would do. It wouldn't get you to heaven. Um, because we're sinners and God is holy and he's a just and holy God, he has to punish sin. So when Christ went to the cross and our sins were imputed to him and paid for by him, uh, he removed our sins. Just like it says in the book of Psalms, I think it's Psalm 103, that says he, he takes our sins and casts them as far away as the east is from the west. So our sins are gone. Um, but that's not what you need. It's not the absence of sins that gets you into heaven. Um, it's the presence of righteousness. So there's the, the whole, I'm trying to get across here, is the whole work of Christ, the, his whole life, his whole ministry. In order for him to get us to heaven, he not only had to pay for our sins, he not only had to die for our sins, he had to live for our righteousness. And that's what we need. That's what, as I asked earlier, that's what we need in order to get into heaven, is we need to have perfect righteousness. Well, we have no perfect righteousness. In and of ourselves, we're, we're guilty. I think we all know that. We've all broken God's law. Um, there is none righteous, no, not one. The Bible in Romans is very clear. It's Romans uh, chapter 3. And so there's none righteous, no, not one. We can't get to heaven on our own, but we need righteousness, and we need perfect righteousness. 
and Christ is the only one who can supply us that righteousness. Now, when he was here on earth, he lived a perfect life. And I'm just going to go here to uh, uh, Matthew chapter 5 in the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, uh, Jesus says, he says, Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass away from the law till all is fulfilled. So Jesus came here and he had to completely and perfectly fulfill the law of God. Everything that is written in the law of God, he had to live it perfectly. Uh, not only in his actions, but also his thoughts, his motives, his deeds, everything. He had to live a perfectly moral life under the law of God. And he did. And so what happens is, is um, when Christ went to the cross uh, as the innocent Lamb of God slain from before the foundation of the world, he took away all our sins. Our sins were transferred, or the Bible uses the word imputations, uh, imputation. They were imputed to Christ on the cross. Um, and the moment you put your faith in him, uh, his righteousness, his perfect righteousness that you need to have in order to get into heaven is transferred and given to you. Some people think of that as like a double transfer. I give Christ my sins and he gives me his perfect righteousness, that perfect robe of righteousness. And just a couple of uh, uh, verses I want to you know, uh, pull up in order to illustrate that point as well. Uh, the first one I'm going to go to is in Philippians uh, chapter 2. And verse um, 10. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong verse. Chapter 3, verse 9. <laughs> I'm actually going to start verse 8. It says, uh, Yet indeed I also count all things, this is Paul writing to the Philippian believers, Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ. Now here's the part I really want to focus in on. He says, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. So that's it. Paul is writing to the Philippians, and he's saying, uh, you know, Paul was um, one of those very legalistic Pharisees that thought that he obeyed uh, the law perfectly, every little fine point of the law. But when he really looked into the demands of the law, including you know, what goes on inside the heart, uh, he saw himself, as he actually describes it elsewhere, as a pile of dung. His righteousness was a pile of dung. And he was more than happy to uh, exchange that, his own, what he thought was his own righteousness, exchange it for the righteousness of Christ. So Christ is the only one who perfectly fulfills the law of God. And he wants to give you his righteousness, which is what God requires of you in order to get into heaven. Um, and I just want to um, read another portion of scripture in Galatians um, chapter 2, verse 16. Again, and I just want to emphasize that this is uh, uh, where Paul is writing to the Galatian believers. And he is emphasizing the point that uh, we, we don't get into heaven or we are, we are not declared righteous by God uh, because of our own righteousness. But he says... Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. And this is a really good part down here. It says, for by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. So that really brings home the point that uh, we shouldn't be looking to ourselves and trusting in ourselves, trusting in our own works, or trusting in our own righteousness, uh, when we stand before God, and if you know, imagine it this way: that you stand before God, and He says to you, "Why should I let you into my heaven?" And one thing you don't want to say is, "Well, because I obeyed the law, I did all these things, yada yada yada." yada. Uh, he's that none of that is acceptable to God. The only thing that's going to get you into His heaven is that you are clothed and covered with the perfect robe of righteousness of His Son Jesus Christ which he freely gives to all who believe in him. So, and so again, I just want to make sure you understand, how is it that, uh, if you understand now that we need the righteousness of Christ to get into heaven, how does his righteousness become right, my righteousness? How do I get that? Or how is his righteousness appropriated to me? Because I want, and I say, I need it, I want it, how do I get it? Well, very simple answer, by faith. 
It is by faith. And I, and I just read that here too. Uh, just read it again. He says in Galatians, he says, And not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law no flesh shall be justified, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Christ, in Christ Jesus that we might be justified by faith. It is by faith. So that is... Um, that's the portion of the uh, the gospel that I, I want to kind of just zero in on today. Um, I'm seeing I'm kind of running up around 10 minutes. I want to make hopefully make this short, but just thank God that um, that it is not by your works that you are justified, but it is by the works, the perfect, obedient works of Jesus Christ and His righteousness that is given to you freely as a gift. And um, and He takes away when He goes to the cross. He, when he's hanging there on the cross, he pays for all your sins, past, present, and future. You don't have to worry about any of your sins. And when you believe in him and you trust in him that he did that, his righteousness becomes your righteousness and is based on that righteousness that you will enter into eternal glory with God and spend eternity with him. And thank God for that. That is a wonderful, wonderful free gift. And thank him every single day for it. Sorry that this ran a little long. I didn't mean it to, but um, I hope this really, really blessed you. And uh, we love you all, and we will see you on Sunday. Or I mean, actually, this Thursday, I think. But if not then, we'll see you th uh, Sunday. Love you all. Bye-bye.